So look at this. You won't believe it. DEA agents in Los Angeles seized about 1 million fake pills containing fentanyl. That was this month, and that's the largest seizure ever in California history. The drugs were found at a home suspected to be a stash house used by a trafficking organization linked to the Sinaloa cartel. According to the DEA, the fake pills are meant to look like real prescription drugs like oxycodone. Here to react, Fox News medical contributor Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Dr. Sapphire, so troubling, especially when you consider 107,000 overdose deaths, according to the CDC last year, first time ever to breach 100,000 on the heels of 2018, where drug deaths came down for the first time in 30 years. Well, that's right, Gail Kelly. And it's a common misperception that, you know, prescription medications are less dangerous um, when people take them, especially because when we talk about prescription medications, it's not going to your doctor, getting a prescription, and going to the pharmacy and getting pure substances. What happens is you have, you have kids, you have adults that get pharmaceuticals, but then they need to get them elsewhere and they get them on the streets. And the DEA and DHS have all said that about 50% of pills that they confiscate have some level of fentanyl in them. Wow. Many of them have lethal levels. And at the end of the day, a secondary to marijuana and alcohol, children, kids, adolescents, they're experimenting with these prescription medications. I say prescription medications like this again because it's not really real. We're talking about just pills off the street that we're getting. And ultimately, these are coming across the border, and they're coming across the border in droves. The only way to stop this is to have stricter control at the border, because kids are going to kids. Kids are always going to experiment. For over a century, it has been morphine, cocaine, heroin. Now it is pills. And so we have to cut it off at the source that is at the border, and that is China that is facilitating it getting to Mexico and coming across our southwest border. So that is a stunning number that 50% of prescription pills that are purchased could have fentanyl. I, as a mom, you know, my daughter's young, but I worry. I saw this story on the DEA's website. There's actually emoji codes that young kids are using. We'll pop it up uh, for different various pills they'd like to order, Adderall, Xanax. And underneath, there's this warning. Fake prescription pills commonly laced with deadly fentanyl and methamphetamine are often sold on social media and e-commerce platforms, making them available to anyone with a smartphone. It's not often. It is the, the way that kids are getting it these days. They're constantly on their phone. So when we're talking about, I mean, think about how much censorship and restrictions we see on social media. But yet they're not censoring and restricting these to the level that they should be. This is how kids are getting it. You need to cut the source off at the south border, at the southern border, and you need to heavily monitor these social media platforms because that is how children are getting it, and that is how they are getting poisoned and dying. It's terrifying. Um, moving on to this next topic, a public health emergency. President Biden, uh, it was declared in January 2020 under President Trump for COVID reasons. President Biden has extended it, Dr. Sapphire. Interestingly, it'll increase benefits for people. It'll make sure that they're prolonged. But I went on the website, the CDC website, and when it comes to Title 42, that's the immigration order using COVID, here's what they said in April. After considering current public health conditions and an increased availability of tools to fight COVID, the CDC director has determined that an order suspending the right to introduce migrants into the U.S. is no longer necessary, <laughs> but we will <laughs> increase the public health emergency. Well, Kaylee, we've talked about this a lot. This administration has a big problem with messaging. You know, it, when we're talking about the southern border, it's okay, you know, the COVID emergency is over, but talking about the rest of the country, no, the COVID emergency is still there. And why is that? So we have just seen yesterday that the state of public health emergency has been extended for another 90 days. And with that comes the expanded access to Medicaid and other services that we saw through that, um, through that public health emergency. Here's the problem I have with this, Kaylee. What they did was they increased the expansion of Medicaid so much that they have had people who otherwise wouldn't be eligible for Medicaid still getting that state assistance and government assistance health insurance. And they also have over 4 million people getting food stamps that didn't get them prior to COVID. Well, that's probably helpful because the cost of everything is so expensive right now. But what they did was they took away the work requirement with those food stamps. So as we're seeing all of these help wanted signs everywhere, is this dis, you know, disincentivizing people to actually go and get work because they're continuing to get government assistance that maybe they wouldn't have qualified for. So it's a slippery slope. There are some things that are good from access to telehealth and some other services, but that doesn't need to be under a public health emergency. These are just fundamental issues that we have had with our health system that should be prolonged. The state of COVID emergency is over and we need to move on. 
Just because we accept that the emergency is over, it doesn't mean COVID is over. It just means as a society, we are moving forward. Yeah, you're exactly right. Not to mention the nebulous web of the CDC, Dr. Fauci, and the science crowd. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Thanks for having me. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.